You are now tuned in to the Next Dimension University broadcast. Come out of the Godnosphere and experience the next dimension in destiny with us. Be empowered and educated through any of the 61 and growing ministry career fields. We are a school of purpose. We are a school of destiny. We are poised and ready to prepare, equip, empower, and deploy you into your kingdom assignment. We are the lowest cost, fully accredited Bible college in Southern California today. And now, join us as your destiny began. All right, God bless you. You're here at Next Dimension University where we're stomping out biblical illiteracy and raising up master teachers for end-time deployment. You're here specifically on that task and that assignment. And those of you that are viewing today the School of Destiny by way of television, we're excited to have you on board. We want you to just hang out. We're not going to be, you know, uh, formal. We're not going to be, if you will, um, you know, trying to do what is impressive uh, to our viewing audience. We're going to be obedient to the move of the Spirit of God. And you're going to find out that was how Jesus conducted himself in his homiletics. Amen. And we're going to be talking today a little bit of, about the homiletics of Jesus. And I was talking to my academic dean, Dr. Luke, and she's like, what is the homiletics of Jesus? And I said, well, you know, Jesus had a teaching methodology. He had a teaching style. He had a teaching approach. And we should be doing, uh, we should be emulating him, right? Amen. So however he does it, we need to uh, observe, uh, look, and critically analyze how Jesus was effective. And we're just going to itemize three or four of the ways uh, uh, principles that was uh, very evident in Jesus's teaching ministry. The Bible says there in the seventh chapter of Matthews that he taught, and he taught them not as the scribes and the Pharisees because they were awestruck. They were uh, uh, astounded as, as Jesus brought forth the word of God because he taught them not as those who taught legalistically or those that taught um, with uh, ulterior motives involved. And as we are preparing end time ministers and we are shaping and molding and equipping and thoroughly furnishing master teachers from this hour, for this hour, we need to begin to examine the quintessential master teacher himself, Jesus Christ, and begin to look and see and examine and emulate how he did it. How? Because he was effective. Amen? So it wasn't that he was just knowledgeable but he was impactful, he was effective, and anyone that came into his presence was transformed. And you had an opportunity to be saved. And that's something I really want to underscore for all of the leaders here is that every time we get up to teach is not to impress people, but is to lead people to salvation. Amen? The Bible says right there in 2 Timothy 3.15, it is clear that e Lois and Enos, uh, who was the mother and grandmother of Timothy, taught him the scriptures, which is really the Tanakh, the Hebrew uh, version of the, of the Bible, the Torah of God, the scriptures, uh, taught him the word of God so that he could be wise unto salvation. So everything that we learn at Next Dimension University, it should be about getting people saved. Amen? So it's all right to, you know, have a theological vocabulary. It's all right for you to sound impressive with all your theological disciplines and all the degrees that you may hold. But the bottom line is to get people to the altar to become altar drawing specialists to get people saved and if you're in agreement with that get radical for a moment and signify that I'm speaking truth as it pertains to that and so you know sometimes you put on you have the apostolic mantle other times you have the master teaching mantle but today I feel like an evangelistic pull to remind people what is all about and that is to get people saved amen it's, it's um, somewhat disheartening to go to a church and to have uh, an altar call and no one responds or one person responds, okay? The whole idea behind people coming together in the congregational setting, one is for discipleship, but another is to draw people to the faith. And that's why we're here. So we had this discussion in San Diego and some of the other campuses. What are the priorities of the kingdom, okay? What are the priorities of the kingdom? The priority of the kingdom, we said, and we, you know, we got into a little debate about it, but it's soteriology, the study of salvation. 
But we said, really, is it the study of salvation or is it hermeneutics, which you know is my favorite subject matter as it pertains to kingdom education, making sure that we not do violence to the text by butchering the word of God and not taking the time to study God's word and be able to come across with the most accurate interpretation of the text. But, you know, we, so we said, you know, is Dr. McLeod, was it the chicken or the egg or the egg or the chicken? Which one is it? Which one came first? Well, I ultimately was able to help them and smoothen this whole uh, complicated situation. Now, any San Diego folks in here today, just signify by giving the Lord a great big hand of applause to you from San Diego. <laughs> God bless you, San Diego followers here. But that hermeneutics is not part of the priority. Hermeneutics is the tool. Whatever it is that you study, whether it's theism, whether it's apologetics, whether it's soteriology or any of the systematic theologies, you have to approach them exegetically. You have to approach them with the tool of hermeneutics in order to get it right. Why are there so many churches? Why are there so many different denominations? Why are there so many different uh, para uh, church groups and, and uh, systems of thoughts and system uh, of, of, of processing the word of God because we don't have a unified thought regarding hermeneutics. And so we all are, so you have these splinter groups and you have people that it's just started on one major denomination like Protestantism and out of Protestantism comes this church, come that church, come the other church. But there's only really three churches recognized in the entire United States: is the Protestant Church, is the Catholic Church, and is the you know the Jew, Jew, Jewish Judaism. Uh, those are the three churches that are or organizations that are recognized. But where does all these other groups come from? Their take on the Bible, their take on salvation, and so as we come to Next Dimension University, more than anything else, uh, we want it to be clear concerning your salvation because you're gonna die at some point, and you're going to have to make sure that your, your salvation is sure. And you can't be debating uh, unclear, not sure concerning your salvation. So as you come to theology school, one of the main subject matters that you have to have securely under your Bible belt is soteriology. The study of salvation, because we're talking about grace. We're then grace right now. The grace theologians. I mean, they're just plastered all over the television. Okay, I'm writing a book right now. It's called "Don't Disgrace His Grace," and I'm trying to show God's people. I'm I'm showing God's people, if you will, if you will. I'm trying to show God's people from a theological perspective. Don't worry. This is just a stage you're going through. This stage changes us. Children walk up to it and proud men and women walk down. You'll be different tomorrow. You'll be different after you shake the hand and take the photo. You'll be different when you see your name on the paper. This stage is not for sitting idle. It does not entertain apathy. This stage is for going and growing, for moving and maturing and rising, for becoming and expanding and thriving. This stage runs, it does not walk. It pursues, it does not tarry. It transforms, it does not shrivel. It rewards, it does not withhold. It begins and it does not end until you hear the words, well done. You'll turn the tassel, you'll throw your hat and then you will shine. So go, go and shine. Walk that stage and shine to the cheers. Walk that stage and shine back at your fears. Walk that stage and shine to the voices that said you couldn't do it. And walk that stage and shine to God who saw you through it. Because remember, it was only by his grace that you could do it. So walk that stage and claim your voice. Grab that mic, speak louder than the noise. Check, check one. We are waiting, waiting to hear what you have to say. Hello, this is Dr. William Sims, Headquarters Dean at Next Dimension University, and standing next to me is Prophetess Sarah Morgan. How are you doing, Prophetess? I am well, thank you. 
Prophetess Morgan has grace next to mention with her presence, and she has spoken to us today. Okay, for certain things that have been delayed, certain blessings that have been detained, do you know that there is a spirit called delay? The only thing that will break the spirit of delay off of your life and cause the blessing of God to be released to you is when you continue in prayer. Men ought to pray always and faint not. My God. And so prayer, people of God, has the ability to release every blessing that God has for you and for me. Prophetess, what did you talk about today? I talked about the power of prayer. I talked about the power of prayer and what I was really trying to uh, uh, share with the body of Christ is that um, anything that is not birthed through prayer is illegal. It is illegitimate. When you birth it through prayer, prayer will sustain it. And even if it dies, prayer will raise it up again. Prayer is the fuel of the believer. Amen. And prophetess, this is the first time that you've been with us. Mm. When you first entered in, what, what, did, what feeling did you get? I sensed um, a very, very uh, kingdom, uh, kingdom-driven uh, 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 presence here. And, and, and like I said before, I, I started to share what God had laid on my heart, that this is what is pleasing in the, in the eyes of the Father, whereby we put aside our different agendas and put aside our persuasions and our opinions and come together as one because it is about the kingdom of God being advanced in the earth realm. It's no longer about me, my fault, and no more. It's about many members, one body, every joint supplying. So I sensed a, a, a camaraderie here, such a beautiful sense of the body of Christ coming together and that's the heart of the Father. Amen. And prophetess, since, um, since you are connected with us now, um, do you feel that what you have brought to us will be something that will encourage the, the students and bless them and also uh, with what you've given us, allow them to uh, encourage others that the school would grow? Absolutely. Um, as, as a matter of fact, when um, Mama Jean Perez was sharing, she, she mentioned that she started ministry in the year 1992. 1992 is when I graduated from Bible college. And I had done everything from the homiletics to the hermeneutics to angiology, demonology, the whole nine. But on the day of our graduation, I had nine of our professors and facilitators pray for me. They prayed for all of us, the whole class. But nine of them that prayed for me said this one one thing that the one thing that's going to undergird everything that you have learned here is the power of prayer and so prayer is essential prayer is not an option it is an essential so I really believe that since the since we've connected this is only an additive but not just a regular additive a necessary additive to add value to everything that is being taught here at next dimension amen Jesus said in the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verse number 7, I believe. He says, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So people of God, the theology of prayer is simply asking. He gives you the, the, the right to come before him and ask. Not that God doesn't know what you need, but God wants you to ask. Ask as a child, as a son, as a daughter. I was reading an article, Dr. McCloy, the other day. It, it really so uh, uh, impressed me. It left an impression on my heart. And the article was about a school teacher that had a classroom of, of students. And, and so I think they were fourth graders or third graders or something like that. And, 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 and so her policy was, uh, 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 children, every time you need something, ask me. When you need to go to the restroom, ask me. If you need some water to drink, ask me. Whatever you need, ask me. And so they asked her, why is that policy uh, uh, so, so important to you? And she said this, because I wanted them to get used to asking and receiving. My God. 
I wanted them to get used to asking and receiving. I wanted them to get used to the whole concept of that when you ask, it will be granted to you. And so Jesus in the same way, when he was teaching and he said, ask and it shall be given unto you. And so God is saying that the theology really of prayer, amen, number one is to just communicate with me. I need you just to communicate with me. Just don't come to me because of what I can give you, but come to me because we fellowship. Amen. Every time you talk to God, you are fellowshipping with God. But then he says that after that, ask me and when you ask me I will give it to you because it's wonderful when a child asks a parent for something and whatever they've asked is granted to them and then he said this that you who are wicked if you know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more if you ask me of the Holy Spirit and I will not give him to you somebody shout yes Yes. Thank God for Dr. Eric Chambers. He's incognito. He's doing our photography, but he's, he partners with me in this, in this whole concept of a school and advancing it. And so give him a great big hand of applause. He's doing our photography today. But um, because of him and people like Dr. Rose and some of our other uh, commencement committee, they have been instrumental in getting these high profile, high ranking uh, individuals to come to our event and we have some very exciting people that are going to be coming this year as we're um, looking to come back return to Los Angeles you want to just elaborate on that just real briefly well first of all um, some of the people like last year for those of you who don't know last year I was instrumental in bringing Yolanda Adams Fred Hammond and also Randall Cunningham to the uh, to the mix and um, as I told Dr. McLeod when we first started, uh, I don't have the money as far as the scholarships, but I know people with me being a red carpet reporter here in Hollywood. And so the people that I've reached out to this year uh, are Magic Johnson and his wife, um, and also Denzel and his wife, who is a friend of mine. And so uh, we're gonna see if they would be uh, participating with us. Um, I was at Los Angeles' um, <clears throat> event last year where I witnessed Magic put six million dollars in the offering, you know, for uh, West Angeles, and I think that um, not just because of that. I've been a member of West Angeles since '95, and what I've loved about uh, Denzel and his wife Pauletta, and also Magic and his wife, is they have been very instrumental in getting that cathedral where we went last year and going to go next year built. And I just felt that, um, I thought that with what they've done for ministry, they've done a lot for business and entertainment, but for ministry, I thought that it would be great if we would uh, connect with them. But we've also got some other people, including um, Shirley Caesar. I was with her on the Walk of Fame and had dinner with her after she got her star. And so I've reached out to her as well. So that's what I bring to the table. I'm blessed to be around these people. And uh, I thank Dr. McLeod for trusting me to, uh, to bring them to the table. And so far, um, they're saying yes. And also, one last thing. Last week, I texted Fred Hammond. And so Fred is going to come and do a fundraiser concert for us. As I told him, as I told him and Yolanda Adams and Randall Cunningham last year, I said, you guys are now alumnus of this university. We're going to expect you to come back and help. And so Fred is on tour now until December 4th. But after that, probably the first part of the new year, uh, we're going to get him here. And what I would like for him to do is to do a concert in Gardena, in Victorville, in Ontario, in San Diego, in all of the different spots. And I would like also for us to have different choirs from each one of those, because also he is now Dr. Fred Hammond. And so um, he also has me doing some uh, booking of some speaking engagements. So I would like for him to not only perform with the choir, but also be the speaker. So keep all of that and your prayers.
to say what this means to you to get your doctorate today. It's an honor uh, to be here. Thank you all so much for all that you've done, especially New Dimension University to all the graduates. God bless next. Well, it's new next for me. <laughs> Thank you all for laughing at the joke. It really wasn't appropriate. I'm so sorry. God bless you. Uh, I appreciate it. Really do. Okay, Yolanda Adams. Fred Hammond. Um... I didn't start out to get this. I didn't start out to get a record deal. I didn't start out to get a Grammy. I didn't start out to any of that. I just felt as a young kid, I wanted to tell somebody about the Lord. And I, I made decisions and choices. I took down because the word of God says, he that humbles shall be exalted. And I watched God exalt in many different situations. So to get this award and to get this doctorate, it's just God's way of saying, you know, I told you, if you follow my word, if you follow my word, I got your back. Awesome. Fred Hammond, Judy Jacobs, what does it mean to you? As a Native American and the baby of 12, I am so distinctly honored today. Uh, I, I look back on my life and I see a little brown Indian girl that uh, everybody thought was so shy and so backward as I was. But something happened when I turned 12 years old. The Holy Spirit came into my life, changed my life. And today I give God all the glory and all the honor. It all goes to him. I'm very, very honored today.
Thank you for listening into our broadcast. Now log on to nextdimensionuniversity.com and register for your next season of formal training and preparation. If you do not know your calling or just want to enhance your knowledge, Next Dimension University is clearly your next step. So embrace your destiny and be the best you can be. Yes, your destiny starts with us. Your destiny starts today.